Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and a welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can create a frosted background for a list item card in your Squarespace website that looks like this. What we're going to do is make that list card slightly transparent and kind of blur the background image behind it. Now, all the codes I'm about to share with you are listed in the description below, but let's hop on into Squarespace so I can show you exactly how to set this up so it looks perfect on your own website. So here we are inside Squarespace, and I do want to mention this tutorial is specific for version 7.1 because we're using an auto layout section, and those are only available in the latest version of Squarespace. I have a carousel section set up right here. I've got an image, title, description, and a button for these list cards. I'm going to hop into edit mode so I can show you these settings really quickly before we dig into the code. For an auto layout section, you'll see the edit content option because we're not adding content blocks. If you select edit content under design and you scroll down here, you'll see the option for style. This is where I've toggled on card, so it has a background. Now I've selected carousel, but this tutorial will also work for banner slideshow or simple list because what we're going to do is change the background of the list item. Now for this specific section, I selected edit section and I uploaded a background image. You can adjust the overlay opacity if you want. In fact, we're just going to turn that all the way off so we can really see this frosted effect. You'll notice I'm not seeing any of the background behind these list items. This is a solid color card, and that's what we're going to change with code. Now, if you're not sure about how to create a list section, just select Add Section, and under the People pre-made sections here, if you see that little eye icon, that means it's an auto layout section. This is going to give you the ability to create a list with an image, a title, description, and even a button if you'd like to. You'll notice over here, these sections don't have an eye. Those are not auto layout sections, so make sure you pick one that has that icon on it. Okay, awesome. I'll go ahead and select Save, and we're going to navigate to Design, and then I'm going to scroll down to Custom CSS. This is where we're going to paste our code. So this code is in the description below, but there's some things about it we're going to want to change. So I'm just going to copy it here, and I'll show you how this works. I'm pressing Control C on my keyboard, and then Control V. There we go, and immediately we're seeing a change with these backgrounds. Pretty cool, right? So this first part is very important. Leave this part of the code alone. <laughs> it says background inherit. That's going to allow us to see the image behind it. After that, I've added a background color. I used an RGBA color code to make it a slightly transparent white. This 0.3 at the end is what changes the level of transparency. If you make it 0.5, it'll be a little bit stronger of a color. 0.75 will be a lot stronger. 0.15, you'll barely see the color at all. So adjust that so it suits your site style. Now, after that, I've added a little bit of a blur to the backdrop filter. That's why it looks slightly blurry, and that's creating that frosted glass effect. You can make that zero if you want to see the full image behind it, or you can make it 15 if you want it to be super blurry. You've got a lot of options there. Now, before we call this tutorial done, I do want to show you how to apply this to one specific list section. We're going to use the data section ID. I have a free Chrome extension that I use to grab the data section ID, and I'll link to it in the description below. I'm clicking the button to turn on the extension, and here I can see the name of this list section. If this is the only section we want that frosted glass effect to apply to, I'm going to copy this data section ID, turn off the Chrome extension, and add that in a space at the very beginning of my code. Now you'll notice this section hasn't changed, but if we scroll up, this section has. This has gone back to the way it was. It's no longer getting that code applied to it. If we don't have the data section ID, this code will apply to any list item on the site. But if we add the data section ID, it's only going to apply it to list items in this section. Again, I turned on the Chrome extension, which is linked in the description below, not an affiliate, just a fan. And I clicked on the data section ID and added it right here before the words dot list dash item. Now, after you've isolated an individual section, go ahead and select save and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial, and again, those codes are listed in the description below. Now, if this is your very first time trying CSS for Squarespace, I would love to teach you the basics. Head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. There you can grab my free guide and watch my quick video that'll teach you all of the basics of customizing your site with code so you can do even more fun things with Squarespace. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like and a comment if you did, and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, 
have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.